a press conference which is done in regarding of the violence which has been uh, in Manipur for the past uh, five and a half months, I have to say, in uh, association with Kawa Manipuri Maite Association, uh, GMMA, and uh, I'm sitting with some of the uh, reputed members of GMMA, which is besides me. Uh, we, the main reason of why we are doing a press conference uh, today is that uh, as we have been traveling to almost more than uh, 16 press conferences in the entire country, the narrative of the people and the one-sided nature of the uh, you know uh, narrative of the people has really uh, uh, been into the heads of people. So we want to educate a little bit more of like what are the main reasons of why this violence is in Manipur. Uh, I've got some documents first of all, and as the very facts that serve why we have what in the manner itself, is it religious or not, is that Goa being also a very rich state which is, has a high population of our Christian population. And being myself uh, a person from the Maitre Christian community, and also my friends and my colleagues who have come here as a Maitre, we want to little bit tell you about the Maitre people and what are the constituents of the Maitre people. Many of you have also visited Manipur in the recent the violence also. We Maitis have a population of the Maitis Hindus also. We Maitis have a population of the Maitis Sanamanism, which is kind of a local deity or I would say the local religious group. We Maitis also have a population of 1.5 lakhs Maitis Christian. And we have also the Maitis Muslims also. And when we look onto the side of the cookies, cookie is almost like 95% would be Christians, I would say. And also sometimes they claim 99% of them are uh, Christians also. And some, and if you look to the real uh, uh, roots of the cookies also, if you see what is uh, the war which is happening right now with the Israel and Palestine also, you'll see Kuki people joining there as an army from the Kuki side, which they consider themselves as a lost tribe of the Israel. And uh, that is the reason why they, see, they say that they also have a connection with the uh, uh, Israeli also. But you'll be very surprised to know that the first Christian in the entire state of Manipur is not a Kuki, it's not a Naga, it's a Maite. And his name is Amum Porum Singh. And people have to know that when it, when it comes to the term, uh, you know, term of this Christian and the Hindu and, you know, Christian and this, uh, you know, ethnic class happening, people in the entire country have forgotten that the very Christian, the first Christian in is a mighty itself. And he is a Amu, his name is Amum Porum Singh. And his grandson is right now serving as a pastor in uh, uh, his place called Fayin. His name is Amum Moses Singh. And he is also a very, a very good dear friend of mine. So uh, people have this wrong narrative of that the Maitis are entirely a Hindu community and the Maitis, you know, entirely are attacking the Kuki Christian community. And which is, which we find is a really, you know, disturbing fact. I being ethnically belonging to the Maite, which our uh, own brothers are, and religiously in my faith to Christianity, I, you know, have understood and studied the sentiments of both the sides. People have gone with this narrative of church vandalization that around, if you have heard the number, it's approximately 350 churches which are vandalized in Manipur till then. But there is also one very unforgotten part of the story. If you properly segregate the number of the churches which are being vandalized in Manipur, you'll be surprised to know that 250 churches, the maximum number of churches, are the Maite Christian churches. It's not the Kuki churches. I have the list of the churches here. You can also take the PDF uh, letter on. Uh, and uh, this is these are the list of the churches from the Namda North America Manipur Tribal Association, where they have also uploaded all the 250. Maitai Christian churches, which are actually our Maitai Christian community churches. And 250 Christian, uh, Maitai Christian churches were included. The other number, which varies from number of around some 80 to 100, are Kuti churches. So, but when the narrative is brought to the United Nations or the European Union or the entire of the national media fraternities, it is carried out in such a way that these are all belonging to the Kuti churches, which is a very false narrative. That is the very reason why if you go again to the uh, Maitai Christian Churches Council 
Manipur, which I am not uh, officially associated with them, but yes, I do work with them a lot. Right now, a case is going on with the Supreme Court where this 240 to 50 number of churches has been going for a compensation with the government of Manipur, which case is still ongoing. You can check the reports also. I'm not just lying with the number of the 250 churches. I mean, this uh, case is still ongoing right now. And <coughs> if you come again uh, to the complexity of what the church's uh, uh, vandalization or how it happened, I'm not here to justify any of uh, my community also. Our community mistokenly also thinking that the Maite Christian belongs to the side of the Kukis or whatever, they worship the same God. 250 churches, other Maite Christian churches were vandalized by our Maite brothers and sisters, which is really a very saddening thing. But having said that, they have come in support of the Maite Christian community today thinking that they have completely assigned with the mistakes that they have made and that is the very reason why they are all here to support we as a Maitei Christian, we as a Maitei Muslim, we as a Maitei Hindu, we as a Maitei Sanami have come together for the territorial integrity of Manipur. And in that list of 250 Maitei Christian churches which are vandalized, the majority number of the churches were vandalized by the Maitei, our own brothers and sisters, and eight churches specifically eight churches, I can name you all the eight churches also, were vandalized by the Kuki people, which are the Kuki Christians. So they have bridged the, you know, game or I would say the protocol of the Christian ethics of vandalizing the churches also. And around 200 Maitei Christian houses in different locations of Chorchanpur, More, Lightong, Kampupi were also burned down, including pastor's houses and pastor's quarters knowing that they belong to the Maitei community. So the Maitei Christians who have lived with the Kuki Christians for you know, 40, 50 years has already broken the ethics and protocol of at least you know, looking on the courtesy of Christian ground. They have at least destroyed many of the Maitei uh, Christian houses and the uh, uh, pastor quarters also. And a completely unforgotten part of the chapter, there is this uh, <coughs> group <coughs> called AMCO, which is the All Manipur Christian Organization. And we also have this Maitei Christian Churches Council Manipur. And also right now I'm the coordinator of this uh, uh, Maitei Christian Victims of Manipur Violence. So we are an association where all the victims of Manipur, specifically the Christians, which are also the victims from the Maitei's also, which are the victims from the Kukis also, are jointly working as a common voice, where we are trying to uh, tell all the difficulties that we are facing right now. But there is also this Utkal, Umamlai Kanva Luk, which also, I would say, if you have the audacity or the courtesy of believing the number of churches which has been vandalized by the Maitais, for the Kukis and the Maitai Christians, you should also have the audacity and the courtesy of believing the number of mandirs and temples which are also being vandalized by the Kukis, and which is also reported by a similar body called Utkal. And uh, I'll, I'll, a little bit of educate what, how temple structures are in Manipur. So, for example, here in Goa, and also being myself a Christian, we, if we have a community of some 40 to 50 households, we have a, let's say, for example, in my uh, area, we have this Baptist church or Presbyterian church, which constitute the 40 families, and we constitute that as a church for the 40 families. That is how a church is made for an entire community. And th those kind of churches, when it comes to number, it's going like, you know, a big number. So when it comes to Utkal, <coughs> being myself a Philem surgeon, Ruhan is my name and Philem is a surgeon. So Philem will have a apocryphal lie or something which we call, uh, uh, you know, uh, a surname God, which will God at least a 40-50 family or 40-50 community, 40-50 uh, houses or the community of that specific area. And that won't be a kind of a very big structure though, but like that will be built in terms of a very small mandir. But when it comes to all those number of small apocryphal line mandirs, and we've been counting it district-wise in Chorchanpur and all these things, you'll see all the details of 393 mandirs and temples, including one of the oldest uh, Hindu mandirs, like 200 years old mandir in, uh, <coughs> in where is that? Uh, Shiva Masjid, Kabulika. Uh, Kabulika and uh, 
with there is this called umangla and all and that is a completeness of 393 mandir but the funny fun, i would say even funny fact is like you know till there you will see all my maite brothers and sisters committing to our mistakes of burning the churches but till then it's very really hard to find any of the entire 50 fraternities or forums or any of the peace forums hardly accepting that they have vandalized eight maite christian churches they have run away from that very fact also they have not uh, completely uh, i would say committed to the facts itself that they have not you know burned this number this many number of mandirs and temples also but uh, there has been this interfaith meeting also from the people of utkal from the people of ampo from the people of different ethnic groups and at least all the ethnic uh, all the interfaith group also have committed to their mistakes that yes we have also done this much mistake in the church we have also done this much uh, mistakes in the mandir and the mistakes of both the side has to be accepted by both the side and only then peace talk can be initiated so if you are asking this question of like how how would we bring peace the only thing is i would say i being a maitre christian they being maitre hindu the maitre sanami we accept the mistakes that we have done of at least burning the churches in the meantime who please have also to accept the mistake of burning this 393 mandirs and also eight maitre christians churches and at least 200 houses and the narrative of that this is a christian clash between the hindu and the christian thing is a completely a wrong statement which being myself a maitre christian also we are not very much sure about this statement yes as a christian we will face persecution in our life till the end breath of our life being a believer in christ we know as a christian we will face persecution my own family has kicked me out of my family because i was a christian in my young age when i was in the uh, fifth standard i was kicked out when i was in 10th standard out of my family because i am a christian when my own family has kicked me out of my family like what can you expect from your community so having said that having said that being as a community also they also support us right now the maitre christians are living in peace and harmony right now in mani in the veli area itself where our maitre hindu the maitre sanamanism or the maitre muslims that everyone has cooperated us right now uh, and we are living in communal harmony and harmony <coughs> right now but there is a big question that I am a Christian. Will I be safe if I go to Jodhpur, the cookie-dominated uh, town? Will I be safe if I go to Nagpur? Will I be safe right now? So that if I am a Christian, though, but still, will I be safe going to Jodhpur, Nagpur? This is a million-dollar question. Will I be safe if I go to uh, more uh, more areas? But now I have to open this uh, shocking statement uh, right now. I know this is so hard for uh, people of Goa to believe. so but i'm not i'm not accusing it i'm not telling it this is what is happening right now but there has been this new circulation going on happening in manipur for the past few months a lot good number of donations from kerala goa tamil nadu being a christian states has come for a monetary support to uh, uh, you know manipur and when it comes to christian faith if i i'm also a christian so you know if five churches are uh, washed away by flood in kerala i'll also come out with my you know purse and at least i'll offer some 1000 2000 gold in the church offering so that that money would be rich to the church fraternity in kerala in in the same manner people of goa have also you know contributed a lot a good amount of money for the people of manipur but when it comes to people of manipur and also the church fraternity in the past few months <coughs> <coughs> the narrative of the maitre christian has been completely sidelined and almost all the christian when it comes to christian help almost all the help has been going to the kuki community and when it goes to the kuki community if it is going in terms of like let's say kind or materials it would be very good because we are not against helping the kuki community we are not here to say if don't no please don't help the kuki community we are not here to tell them please help the kuki community but if you have help with the kinds and materials that is a very okay thing and that is a very recommendable thing commendable thing now if if the people of goa if the church fraternity are among the ones who have sent you know account transaction let's say in terms of lakhs in terms of you know good amount of lakhs and lakhs of rupees there is a big circulation of news that 
the money of the churches are being misused right now. I'll tell you how. Because the entire of our Puki, uh, you know, brothers and sisters who are one in Christ has been claiming in that entire world that we are very poor people. We are, you know, settled tribe. We are living in jungles. We are living in this part of the area. But I must educate the people of Goa that there has been shooting every day from the peri peri peri. I'll tell you what type of guns. Snipers, machine guns, motars. These are all the arms and ammunition which are being used from the hilly area, from the peri peri area. So shooting has been all, all uh, you know, every day done. Not only from their side, from our side also. I mean, I'm not here to speak only for one side. The shooting has been done from both the sides. Completely agree with that, right? People have come up with this news that the Maitis have snatched arms and ammunition from the state police. It's true. They have also snatched it. We have also snatched it. No justification on that. But apart from the arms and ammunition that we and them have snatched, if you see with the level of arms and ammunition, the motars and you know uh, the snipers, where are the funds coming from? This is a question which the people of Manipur, even all the other uh, ethnic groups have started to ask in Manipur. And when we see the root causes of where the funds are coming from, the news has already circulated that the money of the church has been started to misuse. So, you know, instead of going for the relief or instead of going for the kinds and materials, the people of Kukis have started this monies, you know, uh, church monies, and using and buying arms and ammunition and, you know, bullets and everything. So there is this million dollar question that has been asked from the people of Manipur that why don't the people of Goa, why don't the people of Kerala, why don't the Christian fraternity come to Manipur, learn in Manipur, learn in Infar itself, discuss with them, okay, if you have brought 10 lakhs of rupees, it's okay if, if, if you even have 8 lakhs of rupees to the Kuki community, we are okay with that, 2 lakhs of money for the mighty community, but if you help them, please help in terms of materials, times so that the monies are not misused because coming from the ground reality where there are a lot of I'm also from Moira, one of the very very area where you have also visited I'm very near to this Chochampur area a lot of firings are still going on, keeping on happening and we have a lot of question that where are the funds coming from so we we know that already cookies are very rich people because of Kopi plantation very clear with that fact and uh, if you if you if you come with the data also from 2017 to 2022 if i'm not mistaken the nab department nab department uh, gave up a data data of 15400 something acres of land were found to be poppy cultivated in manipur out of that 13122 specifically were found to be from the poppy dominated area where the data itself speaks that we are not here to justify anything. The data itself tells that it is only like the majority are from the Kuki dominated area. And uh, even the church are involved in doing that. If you uh, happen to uh, see one of the interview <coughs> by one of the human rights activists called Bablu uh, Lotongo, recently he even made a claim that the church pastors who are from the Kuki dominated area are made to sign papers with uh, you know with a church forum that me being a church pastor of this specific village i being a pastor won't be involved in any kind of mon money laundering or any kind of money involvement in this uh, you know poppy plantation even they are meant to sign all these things so in short what i'm trying to tell you in reality is in manipur what is happening right now is not a religious class it has some major forces <coughs> like illegal immigrants <coughs> big money of poppy plantation, reserve forest area, and most importantly, the so-called unexisted homeland of the Kuki, which they claim the Kuki Jolin homeland or the Jolin gum that they have to say. So, if you see the history of Kuki's, Kuki's have the this ethnic relation in uh, Myanmar also. The Janta army had a big fight with the Kuki people in Myanmar also. If you see the news of Bangladesh also, you will find our Kuki brothers fighting with the people of uh, uh, Bangladesh, the government of uh, Bangladesh also. If you see the history of Nagas also, you'll see from 1992 to 1995, they had a long fight called the Naga Kuki War. And surprisingly, you have to remember just that we Maitais were the one who have saved them in that violence of five long rear violence. And the courtesy of them, 
you know, we helping them in that violence of five years. We are getting it today by at least losing so many of our brothers and sisters. And you might see us as a very, you know, wild people. Yes, wars are happening. You know, both the community have done heinous crime. I'm not here to justify any of the crimes that our Maitai brothers and sisters have been doing. But I can guarantee you with the history, facts and figure, 1891, there was this last war called the anglo manipuri War. Since the anglo manipuri War, you'll never see a history of we Maitai having any ethnic class fights with any of the community, any major ethnic fight. Even if this uh, ethnic fight was lasted only for a day or something, it was sorted out in a very short span of time. But if you see to the history of our Kuki brothers, they had even fight with the Dimasa Hatao in Assam also. Tripura also, they have a history of fighting with the Tripuri also. They had uh, this Assam fight also. Where, wherever they go, they fight. The only reason why is the same problem which the Nagas had faced with the Kukis we are facing it today. Number one thing is a homeland thing which has never existed in the history. So they they claim that the entire of this, you know, northeast area, including some part of Bangladesh and Myanmar, is a Kuki dominated country which they uh, find. So once they, you know, uh, come up with the demand of this uh, homeland in Manipur, if they succeed in this, they start all taking it territory wise. That's the, their, uh, you know, uh, dream thing. So what I'm trying to tell you is, this is not a fight with the Maitais or even the Kukis right now. If you come, if you come as a real interpretation, as a real Indian, this is a fight with the Indians in the outer influx, or I would say the outer, you know, uh, the outer uh, influx. And uh, there has been presence of a lot of external, uh, external influence also. And even the Home Ministry, uh, HMA has already given an open announcement that there is a presence of uh, external influence in this violence also. So <coughs> it's more of, more of a fight of a real Indian citizen and an outer influx, or the indigenous people and the non-indigenous people. And that is short and then short that I can say. I would love to get questions from the media participants. <coughs> Yeah, recently we have seen one video going viral of one girl being buried in Nikar in one of the districts. Two girls. Two girls, yeah. What, what's your, who are the people who have done yeah. that? So my day is, my day is it, sir. I'm also today in front of the camera telling you, I condemn that. No acts of justification. If it is a wrong thing, we may have the guts to tell it is a wrong thing. We are never here to justify any kind of our wrongdoings. Also, two of our small minor Lentoy Nanbi, MJ, died. Their, their uh, photos were viral and all the national media has picked up. Have you ever seen any of the Kukis coming up with a press conference like this and condemning that act of death of that minor that yes, we have committed a mistake. And we have done this much of a mistake. And yes, we accept our mistake. No, you'll never see any of the Kukis doing that. That's the difference between them and us. We, when we commit our mistake, we are okay to say yes. And many of our Maitai intellectuals, I think even from all the way from the US, all the way from all the global Manipuri Federation, everyone had condemned that act that we don't appreciate this kind of genius threat. But no one from the Kuki fraternity have now come up with a statement that we condemn that kind of, uh, you know, genius threat against a minor. Instead of that, they have, they have organized a protest in Chochanpur to release those people who are arrested by the NI instead of coming up with a protest or condemnation of that act. And that itself tells that like they are not committed with their mistakes also. See when wars are brought to a fall, it's a very foolish statement to always believe that only one side of the party is affected. It's always both sides of the parties are affected. Our Maitai houses are uh, also burnt, Kuki houses were also burnt. You have been to Manipur, have you seen any of the Maitai houses? Kuki houses in the Infal area completely demolished or you know, uh, completely let's say bulldozered or completely vandalized. No, it's burnt. Yeah, we commit, we, we commit with that. It's burnt, it's vandalized, it's destroyed, but it's still standing tall and high in Infal right now. Have you seen any of our mighty houses standing tall in Chochan? It's completely vandalized. I mean, logically also people see the answer itself when you see both sides of the story. And um, see, the Nagas are also a very big tribe of uh, a tribe which follow entire Christianity. 
many. All the Naga churches are still in Manipur right now. All the Naga houses are still in Manipur right now. How can you say that it's a war between the Christian and the Hindu when the entire of the um, Nagas are living right now very happily along with the Maite? They are also having, uh, you know, uh, sharing this bond relation happily with the Pukis also. So <coughs> I com completely condemn it. No justification on that. I would also love, I'm giving an open challenge today here in Goa itself also. If any of our Pukki brothers are happy to sit a joint press conference like this, where we also commit our own mistakes like this, and where they will be also committing their own mistake like this with us, I think that would be the very first step for peace itself. Uh, another question I would like to ask is that what happened to the families over there? Uh, it is uh, it is known that uh, some of the like Kuki community got married to Maiti, and some of the families are divided. Uh, what actually is happening? Yeah, um, I have also <coughs> have some friends who are in the same situation where they had uh, Kuki as a wife and Kuki as a husband and this thing. Uh, there, I would say, see, it's not a narrative of that all Maitis are bad people or all Kukis are bad people. That's a very wrong wrong statement. There are also hundred numbers of Cookies who want peace right now or who wants to speak up. The only reason is the guns are ahead of them. That if you, because there was this new circulation happening recently, few months back, I would say. There's a very good friend of mine called uh, Lamting Tha Haukit. He's from the uh, Sai 2 East. He was also the intending candidate of Indian National Congress. He was a very good friend of mine. And his one of the, his screenshots was viral in the social media. And the screenshot tells that we as a Maite has been openly welcoming my cookies to, you know, start this kind of peace talk or sit on the ground of table talks or any kind of peace talk. But there is this uh, new circulation in social media where it was a leaked social, a leaked screenshot from Nanting Tang Haukip. And the last paragraph quotes that I have, I still have the screenshot here in my phone also, I can share you that. And the last line quotes like this that, if any of the cookies are found to be seated with any of the maitais on the ground of peace, compensation, and religious issue, that cookie will not be shot down or not, will not be killed down by the maitais, but by our cookie ours. We don't hesitate to shoot you because right now we are not at the condition to sit with any of the maitais. How can peace be brought at, any, at this circumstance? If there are at least 100 or 200 pastors who want peace talks in this moment, if these people are threatening you know, them right now in front of their uh, head with a gun, right? how will these 200, 300 pastors will at least turn up? Now in front of everyone, in front of my Maitai people, in front of my Maitai Hindus and Maitai you know, surrounding people, I'm openly telling in front of them that we Maitai Christians are ready for peace talks. They are also here to support. We can at least you know, start something on the ground of religious protests also. No one is done yet. So that's the... That's the issue. So Kuki communities are not in terms to come with this? Yeah, because I think this is a 16, uh, 17 press conference that I've been doing. I've been, at the end of any, any press conference, I've been openly inviting any any Kuki who, who are willing to sit for the very first peace talk openly in front of the camera. It's not a closed door talk, open camera thing that we have started at least a uh, peace talk or something, uh, uh, you know, a first take of, uh, you know, peace. No one is willing to <coughs> turn up on that. Yeah. What would be the reason? That, that, that's what I'm telling. If there would be any of the, uh, at least some 200, 300 pastors or any group, group leaders or any religious people who are ready to do that also, guns are lying ahead of them. That is the very reason why they are not doing it. Right now, see, if you come to the protects of Manipur, we being a real Manipurist, I would say, we don't want the territorial integrity of Manipur to be broken. Let it be the Maitai Hindus, let it be the Maitai Sanamanism, let it be the uh, Maitai Muslims or anyone else. We don't want the territorial integrity of Manipur to be broken. We want Manipur as Manipur. We, even though I'm, a, I'm, I'm also from Manipur, I want Goa to be as Goa. I don't want a divided Goa. I don't want a divided Maharashtra. I want Goa to be as Goa. Same as that, we as a Manipur, we want Manipur to be Manipur. And because of the presence of external forces which are from the Kuki Jin relationship which are from Myanmar and Bangladesh and all that is the reason why they have been demanding for a homeland where they want a complete separate administration completely away from the I mean from the Maitai community or from the entire of the Maitai fraternity 
The very reason is like if you see the data of the government. See, I'm not speaking here for BJP or Congress. I'm not. I'm not a political person. Whatever the BJP has done good, I would say good. Whatever the Congress has done, I would say good. See, if you see with the uh, campaigns uh, recently uh, from 2017, which the government of Manipur, uh, Sri Nomthomun Bilen Singh has taken now, even though people are not happy with him right now because of the state, but though there are very good steps that he has been taken. War on drugs, let's say. Who will come against war on drugs? You will also support war on drugs because at the end of the day, it's a drug issue. And that is the very reason why 85% of the total kopi cultivated area of Manipur were found to be from the kopi dominated area. Obviously, the kopi will uh, get angry on him. And then when they interpret, they interpret in such a way telling that this is a target on, only on the kopi. Just because that the government of Manipur have exposed them, you know, the, uh, the drug uh, kopi cultivated area on Manipur itself. And again, when it comes to illegal immigrants, we Maitreis also have residentials in Bangladesh. We also have in Myanmar. You won't find anything like that, like Maitreis, you know, have rushed towards Manipur illegally. No. Our Maitreis brothers also keep on visiting from Bangladesh to Manipur. But we come in very formally, legally with all the visas and passport. We are just telling them to come in a very courtesy. See, for example, uh, 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 Tamu is from uh, Assam. So he being a Manipur, he is from Assam. He has to come to Manipur also, he has to, he has to even apply inner line permit. Okay. IIT, inner line permit. He, he even has to apply for that proper formal procedure, inner line permit, and he has to come to Manipur. We are telling that we are not completely against all the refugees or whatever. We have also no humanity, we have also helped them many on the humanity front. But if they have to come in, they have to come in a very formal way. That's the only thing that we are telling them. So because of all these issues that they have and they don't have any formal way of answering us, that is the very reason why they have uh, come for a separate administration. <coughs> <coughs> On social media, like uh, many activists, politicians from opposition, uh, film stars, they are uh, just they have expressed that uh, central government has not done enough to end the violence in Manipur. What is your take? Very truly said, they are not doing anything right now, and that is the very reason why we are suffering. I mean, we have a population of 30 lakhs something. There are already more than one lakh. Uh, paramilitary forces right now. What happened in Kashmir, they could have, um, they ended in a very short span of time. What is the uh, topography of uh, Manipur as compared with, you know, this war is only 14, 10% area of the land, I would say. 90% of the area of the land has all hilly area. The war right now is only on the periphery area. Only in the periphery area, not in all completely in Manipur. So it's only in the periphery area, which is only the 10% area of the land. So it would hardly take, you know, some three to four days if the government of India wanted to uh, stop it. Taking the opportunity of uh, national games being held here in the Goa itself also. I would like to draw the attention of all the entire uh, media, especially our Honorable Prime Minister Narendra Modi ji. Let me come up with this statement also. Our Honorable Prime Minister Narendra Modi ji has this zeal of uh, visiting right now, Mizoram, because of election. But that neighboring state of Mizoram has been burning for the past five and half months. He has not uttered any single word till now. Not a word at all. I think the only time he has opened his word was a very short statement regarding the nakedly parallel which you have mentioned. That was the only time he had to mention on that. Rather than that, he has kept his mouth completely shut. I would like to ask this question. Are the lives of are the lives of 30 lakhs people, including the Nagas, I would say, because we are all affected right now in Manipur. Are this life of 30 lakhs people of Manipur is more uh, valuable with the so-called election propaganda which is happening right now in uh, Mizoram? I would like to ask this question to our Honorable Prime Minister Narendra Modi ji also. And let me also have the courtesy of quoting this same statement which I have quoted many of times in the press conferences also. Mr. Narendra Modi ji, if you don't care of we humans and we the citizens of India right now in Manipur, the 30 lakhs population in Manipur, at least some of the cows have started to die in Manipur because of bomb blast. And if you really don't care of citizens and human beings like us in Manipur, 
should at least start taking care of the cows in Manipur. So I think it's a very high time that our honorable prime minister has to come down to Manipur and you know start intervening on things because like good number of cows have started dying already because of home class. So what's the cow's population there? Um, I don't know. I don't have any data on that, but yeah, it's it's already a very true statement that cows have already started dying because the bomb blasts and all like uh, the prairie areas and all there are some bomb blasts happening. So you know those cows which has been and there are so many complaints from the mighty fraternities also that ah uh, we had you know um, put our cows in the pedicle it's missing right now and all like this missing reports has also been becoming very uh, often. So. I think it should be the only way how we should draw the attention of our honorable prime minister. I mean, uh, for five and a half months, he has not spoken a single word. And also now, uh, there is a very interesting statement by the chief minister of uh, Mizoram that he won't share the ties of uh, uh, ties with uh, Narendra Modi ji because uh, uh, because church destruction is happening in uh, Manipur, and you know I don't uh, support honorable prime minister on that. Being a Christian chief minister, I really do have a respect for Mr. Choramtham, uh, Choramthama, the honourable uh, honourable chief minister of uh, Mizoram. But let me have the courtesy of telling this: in the next speech or in the next press briefing, I would like honourable CM of Mizoram to tell this statement that I also condemn burning and vandalising of eight Maitai Christian churches by my Kuki Jo community. Burning of the 200 Maitai Christian houses by my Kuki Jo community. Let him tell that statement in the next uh, press uh, conference. Let's see the circumstances. If he really do cares for the Christian fraternity, then let him make that statement also. So, who is responsible for Manipur violence? Um, so broadly, I would say it's the government of India. Secondly, government of Manipur. And again, coming again to the pretext of. Uh, completely away from the government fraternities, it's an illegal immigrant. It's an illegal immigrant. Because uh, uh, if you were 20 years back from 2023, 1993, and if such kind of press conference uh, was held by the Naga fraternity, and if you ask the same question, they'll answer the same question that it's an illegal immigrant. They would they'll, then the government also definitely, but in that time also the same problem which the Maitis are facing right now, the Nagas have faced on the same issue of illegal Im immigrants, land issue. That's the thing. So I would say more when say illegal immigrants and the government of India and the government of Manipur have uh, have failed to you know um, control this in time timely manner. So that is the reason why it's facing right now. <coughs> <coughs> what do you say about the state role in wanting to clear all the cookie lands because of mineral wealth? which is being eyed by business lobbies. <coughs> I heard uh, rumors of being said that it's because of all this, uh, um, I would say, the natural resources and all the uranium and all this has been found in the hilly areas of India. And that is one of the main reasons why this violence has been uh, fought. Um, I would say I really don't have much to comment on this, but though um, we being, we being uh, a real Manipuri, whatever the resources or whatever it's found in Manipur, let it be the resource of Manipur rather than let it be the resource of the tribal land or uh, you know uh, or uh, specifying it on a very specific community. So uh, that is the very reason why, ma'am, I've been also saying it again and again that rather when it comes to a very complex situation like this, like it is the government of India which should intervene properly and make a very clear statement that. There has nothing to you know do with this communal like it has to be properly intervened in timely manner. So how does the religious conflict come into it? Because it's yeah. an economical conflict. <coughs> so you are asking the question: Is it a religious crisis? Is it a religious crisis? Or no, it's not a religious. Yeah, crisis? it's not a it's not a religious crisis because even if uh, as I told you, ma'am, if it was a religious uh, war between the Christians and the Hindu itself. Then the completely Naga churches and the Naga houses were would be also completely demolished. We Maitre Christians were affected because our Maitres also had this mentality that we worship the same God or that of Kuki, so we must be on the side of Kuki. And many of the Maitre Christian churches, when we see the list of the this uh, Maitre Christian churches, many of them, these churches are associated with the Kukis. So that is a very reason why the Maitres have also, you know, in anger, have demolished many of the 
my dear Christian churches. And yes, my dear Christians are affected. Yes, it's a very true statement though, but we can't take this as a religious crisis. But uh, because if this was a religious crisis, then I, I also told again and again, there are still many, even mighty Christian churches, unaffected mighty Christian churches are still there right now in my opinion. And even if, uh, uh, to your surprise, there are even few of the cookie churches which are standing tall right now in Nepal very very hours. This was a mob thing. And the, because the mob thing, whatever has belonged to the cookies, the mighties have destroyed it. Whatever has belonged to the cookies, the mighties have destroyed it. It's a both the side. What's the so population? My thing and the state is taking advantage of it. Um, I, I, I would say not the state, but the central is taking advantage of it. I would say the central is taking advantage of it. The, mm -hmm. the state government is just a puppet. Uh, so it's a huge <coughs> economic fight. Um, nothing else but that. Yeah, ma'am, there are very different narratives going on. But I would say the uh, fight which happened on 3rd of May was already been boiling for years already. People want to take this as an advantage of the, as an economical fight still though. But uh, this ethnic thing between the uh, Kukis and the Maites has been also boiling because of the illegal immigrants. So this has been a long uh, uh, thing for the uh, past few years, I have to say. Yeah. Thank you. One more question. <coughs> that, uh, the Fuji area mountain, they are supposed to do mining or some Adani or Kiko. Is this true news? It's just a narrative. Now people want to distract the real issue of illegal immigrants. So now they come with all this uh, mining thing and all that. Why didn't why didn't why didn't they publish this uh, news a uh, few years back or some few months back before the violence? Why only the news of Iranian is coming only when there is a war between the illegal immigrants and the local indigenous people? So I think this is just a title according to me. Thank you so much. Thank you so much.